Hey, how's it going? My name is Felix. This is All The News. And we're looking at uh, an interesting bit of article here from The Telegraph talking about the idol finale. So this is uh, Lily Rose Depp, there she is. And they're saying it's terrible. They're saying it's terrible. The idol finale of the uh, six episode drama uh, review, farewell to the worst TV show of the year. They say one out of five stars. They're not pleased at all. Uh, but let's have a little look. Cut short by an episode. Well, that's always a worry. HBO's disastrous music industry drama became as illogical as it was boring and sexist. I watched it. I watched it. Um, it's over here. Uh, this is Amazon. I watched it. And it's really good. It's really interesting and really good. Um, she's really great. The whole thing is very interesting. Um, so I'm a bit uh, perturbed and uh, confused by this this uh, definition that he's putting out there, these reviews. As we can see, I mean, there's Lily looking beautiful. Um, Lily Rose Depp. It's it's looking like there won't be an encore for The Idol, uh, the toe-curlingly naff, which means bad in British, uh, and sexist music industry drama from pop star the Weekend and Euphoria creator Sam Levinson. I thought it was really good. If anything, the set has been cut short with the show mysteriously trimmed from six to five episodes, the last of which confirmed it was not only the worst TV show of the year, according to this guy, but a potential turkey for the ages. It was the dark side of the moon of terrible telly. So cringe-inducing it's hard to imagine how it got off the drawing board. It's actually really kind of cool. Um, once you sort of see the layers behind it and the sort of understanding behind it, I'll show you in a minute. Um, in a way, you have to credit the quality control. The idol has man maintained a consistent awfulness throughout. It began with Lily Rose Depp's Britney Spears-esque, uh, which means type, pop star Jocelyn insisting it was her prerogative as a strong woman to whip off her top for a photo shoot. Five weeks later, it ended with Jocelyn snogging her abusive mentor, Tedros, also known as The Weeknd, in front of a packed stadium in Los Angeles. And, uh... Yeah, it's really actually quite interesting. Quite interesting in, indeed. Um, there's some stuff about the actual uh, storyline here. But I wanted to show you the actual... Um, see, this is episode one. And it starts here. This is the photo shoot that you're talking about. There's Lily Rose Depp there. And the cameraman's over here. And they're shooting these photos. And uh, she decides to open up her top and uh, show her breast because she wants more notoriety and she wants more interest from the public and a guy comes in um if i can find a picture of the guy there he is this guy comes in show oh where is he oh, i can't show you that um but that guy in the shirt he comes in and he says uh you're not allowed to take your top off it's uh exploitative it's not part of the contract and we don't want you to be exploited but then it's Lily herself, or the character Jocelyn herself, who wants to take this top off because she knows it's going to be more interesting to the general public. So she is exploiting herself, or um, she knows what it is to take your top off in these photo shoots and have them go on magazines and around the world. And she knows how much money that will generate, and that's why she's doing it. So in many ways, she's empowering herself. In other ways... She's fully aware of what's going on. And in other ways, she has autonomy of her own self and career. And she's quite aware of how much notoriety nudity causes. If you look at Kim Kardashian made a billion dollar industry from one sex tape and her entire family are living high on the hog off one sex tape. So she's fully aware that nudity generates headlines which generate interest, which can lead to money. And so she's quite aware of it. But the these industry, they have a man, where is he, the guy, who's an intimacy coordinator. And he was saying, well, no, you can't take your top off. Um, the question is, is this exploitation of her by this TV show? Or is this um, an example of what really goes on in the sort of Hollywood industry where women have autonomy, know what they're doing, are not being exploited, but want to use their sexuality and um, assets is if that's a bit of a weird way of saying it but they can use what power they have to gain notoriety and money and fame um, so that's what the sort of general theme of the whole show is about personal autonomy versus exploitation um, is she being exploited is she exploiting herself is she empowering herself is she being exploited but thinks she's been empowered that sort of thing um, so she's 
she's on this photo shoot as you can see here and this is all jolly but it becomes a bit foolish at this point because this guy the uh, intimacy coordinator he uh he's interrupting this photo shoot so much that this guy you know that guy there's a better picture of him here yeah this guy on the right he um has him locked in a bathroom for three hours to avoid disrupting the set so that comes across as a bit of a jokey sort of farcical non-real sort of situation because in the real world you wouldn't lock someone in the bathroom you just say to them um, you're no longer required please leave or they would fire him they wouldn't do some sort of slapstick comedy of locking him in the bathroom and paying someone to keep the door shut uh, which is what they actually did uh, this guy here it would be kind of ludicrous um, that guy's the one who blocks him this is the assistant uh, this is her assistant and it's one of these situations where uh, the character Jocelyn played by Lily Rose says uh, oh she's my best friend and also my assistant and that happens quite a lot I think in the industry where you have these women bring their friends in uh, but they need to pay them so it becomes a strange relationship of a uh, paid friend which is never a good thing uh, if you have to pay your friends then something's going horribly wrong oh yeah, this is when he's taking him to the bathroom to lock him in the bathroom uh, for three hours which just seems farcical it makes it into a comedy rather than a serious sort of drama but there you go and um so yeah he gets this guy to lock him in the bathroom and says right stay there i'll give you three thousand dollars to lock him in the bathroom people don't pay thousands of pounds for people to do simple tasks when they would they could have just said you're fired and leave not pay thousands of dollars uh for this otherwise you're thinking there's so much money floating around uh, that three thousand pounds is just a, a token gesture for going to get a coffee or something but anyway um so he gets locked in the bathroom and then suddenly there's a picture of uh lily or the character of lily in this phone and this is quite a strange sort of situation so this uh this phone or the picture on the phone is of um jocelyn's character in um in a compromising situation shall we say uh yeah exactly as you imagine and um they're questioning whether it's a good thing or a bad thing and uh they don't seem seem horrified by it and nor does uh, jocelyn's character or lily rose's character jocelyn she doesn't seem phased by it and i think my impression is that jocelyn herself has organized this photo to be shared on social media for again the same sort of reasons um in the same way that kim kardashian made a fortune from a sex tape you can make a lot of money from uh, from some of these images uh, especially if you are in the public eye so very interesting sort of stuff going on this concept of um personal autonomy who's being exploited are they exploiting themselves is society exploiting them um these sort of questions you keep asking yourselves so she's making a music video these are the dancers uh in their preparing uh in the garden i don't know why that didn't um well, but you can see the small image of them and uh she comes on and does her section for the dance and this is all jolly um it's the usual sort of pop dance that you see hundreds of times on every show it's the usual sort of thing you'll see it on the vma awards the mtv awards the teen choice awards it's the same sort of um thing it's all hip hoppy music um that you'd see and um then she after this she goes out with her uh, assistant slash best friend and they go out to a club and uh, this is all jolly and you'll see there this is a genie from blackpink if you are into k-pop quite interesting to see a genie coming out and doing an american tv show and they go to a club and they meet uh the the weekend i find his name ridiculous but there you go and uh, he seems like a nice guy and they talk about sort of uh, he they get on well together and they like each other and it's all kind of sexy and uh they meet up here and it's all quite sexy and flirty and um this is all nice and what else uh, you see here that uh she this is jocelyn's character she likes um some sort of control when she's in a sexual situation she likes some sort of control she likes a hand around her throat i know quite a lot of girls who sort of like that but that i mean i don't mention that spuriously because it comes up later and uh and then there's a chat with this journalist woman and uh lily keeps no the journalist keeps turning off the recorder 
there's a little recorder on her phone which is on her lap and uh, she keeps mentioning strange sort of personal things um, and turning off the recorder then mentioning personal things then turning it back on again and uh, Jocelyn Lily's character keeps turning it on so she keeps turning it off she keeps turning it on and um, <laughs> why this is going on I'm not sure I'm not sure about this at all so there's a lot more chatting and then uh, oh my little cat's in the way over here and they meet back up with the uh, weekend goes back to her house and they're getting on well and you sort of get the impression that they are as sort of um, sexually adventurous as each other or she wants to be more sexually adventurous I don't think mission reposition in the dark is for this girl I think she wants something more um, exotic and interesting and then this bit we have uh, the weekend puts a cloth over her face to control her sort of breathing and because uh, as I mentioned back here, when she was um, enjoying herself, <laughs> uh, she likes something around her neck. So when we come to here, he's doing the same sort of thing, and she likes that very much. And that's the end of the film. So, oh, not the film, the first episode. So the question is: Is it is it exploitative? Is it um, is it something? So this is a cloth that she can breathe through it. And um, is it is it a question of exploiting? Um, her by that I mean this actual TV show or is it um, an expose of exploitative relationships or is it really just uh, letting us know that women have autonomy make choices and have desires and these are what they are and we keep treating women as um, people with no autonomy and no choices of their own uh, but yet they do and they can choose whatever they want to choose but um, it's often too often that we claim women are victims when really they're looking for that themselves or are they being victimized and they think they want something um, but really it's being foisted upon them by society's expectations see all these questions were coming up in my mind I was thinking is this exploitation is this um, an expose of exploitation is it empowerment and um, all that I found quite interesting so when I come back to this telegraph article that just says um, it's the worst thing in the world. I'm thinking, no, it's actually very interesting. Um, I think you have to be quite sexually um, open and quite sexually sort of uh, tolerant and uh, accepting of more abstract relationships. And then it becomes much more um, sensible, reasonable. Oh, I'm not sure what I'm looking for there. But yeah, um, I think this guy sees it as very extreme. He sees uh the weekends as an oversexed weirdo um maybe maybe but i think maybe this guy who wrote the article maybe he spends most of the time with the missionary position with the lights off i don't know i do not know um but yeah it's not it's not bad it's not one star it's actually quite interesting um i quite like it i think it's fun um well fun yeah i think it's fun it's yeah, fun is a weird thing because the guy getting locked in the bathroom made it comedic rather than a serious, um, hardcore, hard-hitting, gritty drama. It became uh, somewhat funny <laughs> at that point. I was like, you don't lock people in the bathroom for three hours. Uh, it's almost impossible to do that with an adult male. It's just, you know, for three hours. And some guy's holding on to it with a handle on. I was like, no, come on. Um, but yeah, I mean, really have a look at it. It's not, don't believe uh, Ed. Don't believe old Ed. He seems like some sort of puritanical, um, anti-sex, um, anti-sex weirdo. <laughs> if he's going to be calling people weirdos, uh, I think he's an anti-sex weirdo who's against uh, personal autonomy and uh, doesn't allow women to have freedom of expression of their own sexuality and identity. But uh, this is my personal opinion. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Um, is it personal autonomy? Is it exploitation? Who knows? Who even knows these days? All right. I'll see you guys later.